creative friends, it's Patricia from patriciafenty.com and today I have a tutorial on how to do a crocheted granny square stocking and what I'm doing with this stocking is uh, I am showing you how to put a lining in the stocking. Um, crocheted stockings are can be very pretty but they're not necessarily practical because the fabric stretches out and if you're doing granny squares there's little holes in there so if you're putting in small things like pencils or things like that they can slip out. Um, so a lining gives a, a stocking, a crocheted stocking, much more strength and integrity so you can fill it full of yummy things and heavy things and also the hang tag being fabric rather than a crocheted um, chain is, is much stronger as well. If you are interested in doing just the lining, I'll put a timestamp here so you can go straight ahead to that because you can use this lining for any crocheted stocking pattern that you like. I will be showing you how to make this particular stocking. We're using my small tall granny square pattern. I'll show you how to assemble it, how to do the top band, and of course how to do the lining. So it's a lot of fun. I particularly like the tog square because um, it has this nice star pattern in it, which I think is lovely. And um, yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to say. So let's get started. Now you're going to need 13 granny squares. You can use any granny square pattern you like and any color combination you like. I'm using a number four medium weight yarn in four different colors. This is my small tall granny square pattern. I'll link to that in the description box below. Click on dot 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 more and click on the link for the blog post. This is a five inch square. You can make it um, the squares any size you like. Uh, this stocking done using this size square. I'll put the size up here. And then of course we're going to line this. So um, you want to choose a lining that when you lay your square on it the color that shows through is complementary. You could choose a fabric that has a fun Christmas print on it like this and that would be a lot of fun. But when you lay the fabric or your granny square on that the way the color looks when it comes through, you might not be able to see it on the camera, but it actually shows kind of a pink color. So just consider what the inside of your printed fabric would look like through the holes of the granny square. You'll need about a uh, half a yard of fabric for this. And we can, you can either machine sew it or hand sew it. I do have a tutorial on how to hand sew lining. It's, uh, it's for a purse, but the principle is the same for the stocking shape. So if you do that, you'll need some um, sewing thread and a, a little sewing needle. I'll put a link to that tutorial in the description box below. Otherwise you can use your sewing machine. You're going to need some scissors and your crochet hook, whatever size crochet hook you used for your squares, and also a darning needle because we're going to sew the squares together. You can crochet them together if you like, but uh, I'm going to sew them together. I'm going to use the whip stitch to sew the squares together. So I make a, a length of yarn that's three times the length of the square and I like to lay the squares this way, the top one and the bottom one, and I start the yarn in the back top of this square here and leave a little tail to darn back in the other way. So this these squares have a chain two in the corner so you're going to go into the the second chain of the corner. So there's the chain one, there's the chain two. If you had a chain three you'd go into the middle chain. We have a chain two so we're going to pick up the second one bringing your needle in up from the inside of that front loop and then you're going to come down onto this square. There's your first chain and your second chain. Go into that uh, top loop or back loop. This is called a back loop, but I always call it a top loop because it makes more sense to me. So I do apologize for that. <laughs> um, and then going into your next square, you're going to pick up that top loop or back loop of the next square and bring that through. And then come back down into this square pick up the next stitch, go up into this square, pick up the next stitch. And you're just going to whip stitch that all the way along until you get to the end of the row. It's a super easy stitch and by going into the um, this uh, top loop or back loop, whatever you 
you want to call it, it creates a really nice frame and a nice stitch. Um, you can crochet these together if you like, maybe using a complementary color. And then you can't see very well with this color, but these stitches are a little bit on the loose side. So I'm just going to pull them with the, the tip of the needle and snug them up. So make it, you know, a nice um, snug stitch, not too tight where it's pulling on the fabric. So go ahead and stitch across and I'll see you at the end. Okay, coming to the end of this seam, I've just gone into the first chain of that chain two. And then if, you're, if you've stitched this together properly, your last stitch will go down into the first chain of the chain two of the bottom square. And you bring that stitch down and then you can just flip it over and darn your tail in here, there and back and there and back. And you have that piece joined. So you're going to carry on and you're going to sew three panels with three squares each and two of them, uh, you'll join this one here obviously, and two of those panels you're going to make into tubes. So you're going to join together, make two tubes and you're going to leave the third one just as a length like this. So go ahead and sew those um, panels together and I'll see you when that's all done. Now, once you have your tubes sewn together and the one open piece, we're now going to stitch the, the body of the stocking together and you're going to lay the squares out so that they're folded opposite of each other. So you have the whole square here and folding the half here. Same thing on this side, full square here, half folded there. And then of course, this is the open piece. And this is gonna be the open part that will be the front of the boot of the stocking, the front part. So you're going to take a length of yarn that is twice the length of this plus another half for your tail ends. And you're gonna go ahead and use the whip stitch to sew these sections together. And this one here, we're going to begin at the very center of this cluster of three double crochets. You're going to take the middle stitch of that. You can use a stitch marker to mark that. And then you're going to go into the, not the first chain, but the second chain of that corner. You'll use that stitch and you can bring those stitches all three or these two stitches into this center stitch. I do believe that's how it'll work. I will go ahead and do that and I'll let you know if it's right or not. But go ahead and sew those two panels together in that way and I'll see you when that's done. So yes, that does work perfectly. And I forgot to mention that when you are stitching around like this, you are working into the second chain of that chain stitch in the corner, the one that has not been stitched into, you're working into the whip stitch and then the second chain of that chain two space. And you wanna be really careful that you're picking up that second chain. It can be easy to pick up the first one and then you end up um, sort of with a double stitch. And in fact, I did that because I'm short one stitch here, but you know what, it's close enough. So, this part of the boot, the slipper is open. We'll be stitching a piece on there. And I'm gonna go ahead and stitch this piece on. The, this will be much easier. These will match up stitch for stitch. Again, making sure to catch that, that chain two in the corner, the whip stitch stitch, and the other chain two. And you'll do that all the way around and attach this piece. All right, so we have the top section of the stocking done and we have this opening at the bottom. We're going to take another square here and we're going to sew it into this piece here, essentially at this angle. So what you're going to do is you're going to join on as you normally do to um, like you're joining the squares together, just like I showed you before. So go ahead and do that. And I'll meet you up at the corner here and show you how to get around this corner. So as you come up this side into this intersection here, the best thing to do is, is to take your stitch markers and, or just a piece of yarn and mark the stitches that you wanna match up on this side. So we're wanting to match up 
the top loop of the chain. Here's the chain one, there's the chain two. So we want that to match up with the chain one, chain two of this side. So you can use your markers to match those up. And then as you go around, you can stitch accordingly. So this isn't going to be uh, a really perfect kind of stitching. You just wanna work your way around. But what you're looking for is also you have the whip stitches from this seam here, and you're not going to be stitching into those whip stitches because then you'll have too many stitches. So I'm going to come around here. That's go into this one, come into this stitch and into this one. So now I'm coming into my, that's the chain two corner. There's the chain two corner. So I'm gonna pick up this one, go into the chain two. We're gonna have to do some double stitching here. I'm gonna go back into this one and I'm going to pick up this middle stitch here that, and you may not have that middle stitch. I think I have that because I, I skipped. And then we're gonna come around and let's see, you can go into this chain two stitch. And I'm going to just, you know, just looking by how it looks so that there isn't gonna be a hole here. I'm gonna pick up what is actually the chain one stitch there. So you're just kind of working your way around this corner as best as you can. And here I am, I am at this stitch and this stitch, and I'm off a little bit because I actually want to be coming back down into this stitch again, and I'm going to do that. And now you're gonna carry on, and <laughs> hopefully, the, the stitch will work out at the bottom. It'll be very close. And you know, if it's out a wee bit, that's okay. You'll just be out a stitch on one side or the other and you can just either skip a stitch or double stitch to uh, sew that up. And see, that's that corner all stitched. So carry on and you can fasten off there at the end and I'll show you the next step. All right, once you have that toe piece done, then the bottom part of the toe, you could take two squares, wrong sides together, and stitch up these two sides. And then that is going to attach to this section here. And then the last square, you're going to fold on a diagonal like this. And that is going to be sewn on four sides all the way around here. So you need a pretty long piece of yarn for that. And so again, just using that same principle of marking, matching up your, your corner uh, chain stitches and your three double crochet clusters, you wanna keep everything in line. Um, you may need to sew into the, the whip stitch, you may not, depends on where you are. So just use your, your best judgment to sew those pieces on. Of course, darning in all your tail ends as you go. And the last thing we'll be doing is the heel. All right, so once you have these four seams done, up there and up there, you want to continue stitching right into this intersection here. So there's this uh, seam here and you'll have the same on the other side. So you want to bring your, your yarn in and sew up that intersection. And then if you have a long enough tail end, you can just pass it into the inside. If not, just darn in your tail end and we'll start a new piece from the inside. Because what we're going to do now is we're going to flip it inside out. And from the inside, we're just going to sew this little section here. So either darn it in or put your needle inside and, uh, and flip it inside out. Okay, so here we are. This is my beginning tail for this piece here. So I'll darn that in later. So yes, yeah, so you're just going to bring a stitch line up there and you're just going to bring your needle in and then bring it out. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Just work your way along here as best as you can. 
going through all the layers and you do the, the two layers and you do want to line these these squares up so it's it's nice and even there and just sort of sew your way up going through both layers of the square at an angle and and it doesn't matter that it's a, a different color yarn. You're probably not seeing my hands probably in the way here. And um, there we go. Just a simple stitch going through all the layers. And then we'll get up into the corner here. And then you can just come up into here and then you can just darn your tail in back in that way. Darn in this tail in and any other tail ends that you have. And then we'll flip it right side out. All right, so that, that makes a nice little heel shape there. And I can't get the whole thing in, but that's the whole main part of the stocking all done. So what we're going to do next is we are going to crochet a band around the top. Now it's decision time. Um, we're going to start by just doing around a single crochet around the very top of this in this this outside color whatever that is for you so for me that's that medium shade of green now what color do you want the band to be and I couldn't decide so I just made little swatches of each color so here is the dark green and while I like the dark green it would be really hard for me to show you how to crochet that because you won't see that then I tried the cream color and I like that. And I thought, well, that is a really good choice, especially because I'm using the cream color fabric as a lining. And then I tried the red and I just made these little swatches. They're about two inches high. And I think I'm gonna do it in the red. So if, if you're not certain, you could do swatches like this and see which colors you like. Uh, the green also, this lighter green would probably look really good, but I wanted to bring in one of the other colors. So I'm going to go ahead with the red, but we'll first start by doing a row of single crochet in the whatever is your outside color. Okay, so taking the color of the outside round of your squares, we're going to create a slip knot, and we're just going to do a row of single crochet all the way around. So put that on your hook. So this is the front of the stocking, and this is the back where the tag would go, uh, the little hang loop. So we're going to start in the back. If you want to carry on with the same sort of style of, of having this uh, front loop visible, you can... Um, crochet to make that work out so just starting at the back here with every crochet stitch you have your front loop that's the one that's exposed there's your back loop and then in the in behind that is a back bump and that's what we're going to crochet into so you got your back loop your back bump going under both of those you're going to join with a slip stitch so bring that through flip your tail over and do a slip stitch then you can do a chain one. You can go into the, um, do the front loop and back loop if you like. You don't have to do this back loop and back bump, but it just, it makes for a nice little um, look. So going over to the next stitch, we're going to go into the back loop, pick up that back bump, yarn over, pull through and do a single crochet. Back loop, I also call that a top loop all the time. And then there's a back bump. That's a chain stitch, but you'll see that that's there. And your front loop is not being crocheted into. Back loop, back bump, and do a single crochet. So you're just going to single crochet into the back loop and back bump of each stitch all the way around. And your chain stitches will be a little bit tricky to find, but you're basically just always leaving that front loop that you're not crocheting into. When you get to the intersection, you're gonna pick up the whip stitch seam as well. So you're going to uh, pick up one of the chain stitches, the whip stitch into the chain stitch and carry on. So you can do that single crochet round and I'll see you at the other side. Okay, so here I am at the end of the round. I had marked my, my chain stitch when I began. So I'm going to join into that chain stitch and I am picking up two loops there and I'm going to join with a slip stitch. 
Now, if you wanted to carry on with this color, you would just chain one and carry on crocheting around. But I'm going to change to the red, so I'm just going to cut a tail and pull that out. And I'm going to start with a new color for this round. So joining on with the new color, I'm going to join the stitch just behind that and going under both loops. It's a bit straggly, that one is. So going under both loops of the stitch behind or in front of where I fastened off, I'm going to join on the new color, pull that through and do a slip stitch and a chain one. And I'm going to mark that chain one because I can never find them when I come back around. So I'm going to carry on with this same stitch idea where we're crocheting into Go into the next stitch, going into that back loop or top loop, and picking up the back bump. I'm not getting under all the plies of that. There we go. Yarn over, pull that through, and do a single crochet. And then onto the next stitch under the back loop and the back bump. I know this is a little bit hard to see. There we go. Yarn over, pull that through, and do a single crochet. So I'm going to crochet into the back bump and the back loop all the way around. And that's going to continue on with that same idea of having that little ridge of front loops showing. Of course, you can go through the front loop and back loop if you'd sooner do it that way. That's totally up to you. But carry on and crochet this round uh, whichever way you want, and I'll see you on the other side. Now here I am, I've done my last stitch that was over top of that joining knot. There's my chain one that I wanna join into for this round. So going in under the top or back loop of that chain and there'll be a back bump there as well and join with a slip stitch. And now you can just carry on doing the rounds by doing a chain one and Put your little marker in there and then that's that stitch there the next one is kind of pulling i don't know if you can see that but it's right behind this stitch here is the next one your your top loop your your back loop the back bump might be a little bit tight to get into that very first stitch because the stitches are kind of pulling where you've joined there we go so just do your best to get in there do your single crochet, and then carry on doing your back loop and back bump and crocheting into those two stitches and go all the way around. So you can do as many rounds as you like. And if you wanted, you could make like a really long band and then fold it over. That would be a lot of fun. Can see how nice that looks so carry on i'm going to make my band about that wide so i'm going to go do that and i'll come back when i'm done that you make your band as high as you like and we'll see you when i'm done and you're done all right so i completed a total of seven rounds of the single crochet and then including the first round in the green that's eight rounds that gave me a two inch band. And then you just do a chain one to fasten off and cut your tail end and tie that in. If you wanted to use this stocking uh, for ornamental purposes and you don't need the strength of the lining and the fabric tab, then you could just create a chain stitch, I don't know, 15 chains or so, bring that back down, slip stitch it into here. Uh, tie it off and darn in your tail end. So you can do that. So at this point, the body of the stocking is all done and I can't get it in, in the camera. Here, there we go, something like that. And so now we are going to do the lining. 
Now doing the lining is surprisingly easy. What you're going to do is you're going to take your lining fabric and you put it right sides together so the wrong side is facing out. And then just you, where you're going to lay your stocking, you can place some pins there on what would be the inside between both layers of the fabric. And you're just going to use the stocking as a template to trace out the outline the, of the lining and, and have it pinned all the way like that. And then you are going to use this and you're simply going to stitch right along here. You're going to add a half an inch to the top because we're going to fold that over to the inside of the stocking. And you're going to sew right down the line that you draw and sew all the way around. And once you've sewn around, then you could just cut a seam allowance, like a half an inch or quarter of an inch. If you want, you can do a zigzag finish. I'm going to cut about a quarter of an inch zigzag finish. So you can use your sewing machine for this. If you're hand stitching, I do have that tutorial on how to do hand stitching for a purse lining. That'll be in the description box below the video. Uh, this, you're just going to stitch it and then uh, cut across the top here. You don't have to worry about um, making any little, um, oh, what do you call those little cut things in here? Notches. You don't have to make any notches or anything because this is going to literally slip inside the stocking, this side facing out just as it is. The other thing that you're going to do is you're going to cut a little strip of fabric that is six inches long by an inch and a half wide. You can turn that right sides together and you're going to stitch just a little quarter of an inch seam allowance, leaving both ends open. Use a crochet hook, a small crochet hook to pull that inside out or right side out. And then you can press that nice and flat, you know, once it's right side out. And that's going to be the little, the little hang tag once it's sewn together. So go ahead sew this, whether your hands still sewing or using your machine, again, leaving that top little uh, half inch to turn over. And we'll see you when that's all done. All right. So with the hang tag, I actually had to sew one end closed and use a chopstick to pull it through. I couldn't get the hook to pull it through. I've gotten a little rusty with my sewing techniques. Anyways, got that sewn together, pressed nice and flat with a seam to the, the one side here. And then the stocking lining is all sewn and I pressed that. And then I've turned it over three quarters of an inch. So I had a half an inch for my seam allowance at the top, plus a quarter of an inch. You're gonna turn that over, give it a nice press. And then you wanna sew your tag just fold it in half and you can put the seam to the back. So it's going to be this way and you're going to just sew that right along this seam here on the wrong side and give that a nice secure stitch. And this is the back of the stocking where the heel is, of course. So uh, sew that on, give this a nice little press, whatever your seam allowance is, plus a quarter of an inch and we'll see you when that's all done. All right, so here we go. That's all sewn on nicely, pressed over. And then the next thing you're gonna do is just fit it right inside the stocking and get that all fitted down to the bottom of the toe and just get that all fitted in nicely. There we go. So the lining is in there nicely and you want to have this tab piece uh, nicely along this this back seam heel seam here. And so then the next thing you want to do is you're going to pin the lining to the crocheted stocking and just bring the lining down about a quarter of an inch from the top of the crocheted hem. And you'll pin that along there. And then you can either take this to the sewing machine or you can hand stitch it. And again, I show how to do hand stitching in that uh, tutorial that is linked in the description box below. If you want to do it on the sewing machine, then I suggest putting, uh, you know, whatever the color of your band is in your bobbin for the thread and then the, the color of your lining in the top, or you could use the red if you like for that. And when you sew, I prefer to sew from the inside so I can keep it nice and straight. 
and also the fabric, the crochet fabric might get caught in the feeder and if that's a problem, you just put a layer of tissue all the way around and that'll help the crocheted fabric move through the feeder of the sewing machine without it getting snagged up. So you can either hand sew that or take it to the machine. I'm going to machine sew it so we'll see you when we're back and we're nearly done. And just one more thing, you because the fabric stocking is has flexibility in it and the lining doesn't, the lining may be a little bit tighter than the fabric of the crochet. And in that case, all you need to do is you kind of ease the crochet into the lining a bit. So by that, I mean, gently push the crochet over a bit and then hold that and take a pin and put that in and then Take the crochet, push, push it that way a wee bit, kind of squishing it in there and then pin it. So you're just gently easing the, the crochet in a little bit. I guess in a way you're kind of gathering it or puckering it and you want to put your pins quite close together like that. See how that's already made a huge difference? So yes, yeah, so you can just ease the, the crochet part in if that's a problem for you. All right, so here we go. That's all sewn in nicely and it worked really well on the machine. Didn't actually need any tissue paper at all. And um, so the only thing that is an option, you don't have to do this, but you could put a little tack in the heel going all the way through this, the crocheted stocking into the lining and also tack it at the toe just to keep the lining more stable. You could even put a tack in here if you like. That would be kind of tricky. You'll have to go down into the stocking with a thread and needle and place a, a little sewing stitch in there. And so I'll just set the camera up so we can see this uh, full view. Welcome back. Here we go. Final reveal. Doesn't it just look so lovely? And so there you go. Doing the lining is just such a great way to make a crocheted stocking more practical, uh, more durable, good to fill with lots of yummy things. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel and we'll see you next time.